Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Glide. We are going to boot Unity and just make sure we have a fresh new project to work with. So I'm going to hit new and then leave it on 3D. I will then create a project and today's episode is going to be about creating a fade screen. So the idea with this tutorial is I wanted to actually create the scene in orders um, that you're going to be seeing them. So when you open your application, the first thing you see is the splash screen with your logo and all that kind of stuff. This is what we're going to be doing in this very first episode. We're going to start with the preloader, I like to call it. I'm going to hit Control and S to save my scene and call this preloader. This is actually the name I like to give my scene at the very beginning. That's the one that is only being played once. And it's a scene that contains data that is going to persist through the scene. So this is where I put my object that have the don't destroy on load call. Since we have a brand new project right here, we need to create some folder so we don't get lost. I'm going to right click in my project folder, then create a new folder. This one is going to be called scripts. And let's create another one for scenes. And then I'm going to have another one for artwork. However, we do not have any art right here. And um, something that I want to give you guys while you're making this game is just to share with you the art I've made for that game. It's nothing fancy, it's really something really, really simple, but if you guys want to implement your own art, you can also do that. However, while we're making that game, if you don't have that art, so if you don't have art, you can head over to n3k.ca, then click on download, and it is a free asset. So basically, it's called Glide Asset. It might change a little bit by the time you're seeing this video, but it's gonna be on the website, it's gonna be free. There is also going to be links in the description down below, so I recommend you actually check out the description Click on the Patreon post as you're not going to have to fill in any information. You can simply grab the dull node and then just head over back to Unity. In both cases, you are going to end up with a artwork.rar file. So I'm going to extract this to my desktop. And as you can see, we have a folder called artwork. If we just open it really quickly, just to have a look of what's inside of there, there is some button graphics, really hard to see, some normal graphics. So we have the avatar, the glide. Um, splash art, token, and another thing you'll see that we'll be using that later in the future. And also two models, plane and ring. So I will simply drag and drop my artwork folder inside of the project folder. Now this way we have art in our game. Okay. All right, so let's go back to our actual task of creating that preloader scene. So what I will do right here is head over to the hierarchy, right click and create a new image. So that image is going to be my background. But before we even go into that, we need to actually have the proper scaling for our canvas. Right now, as you can tell, it is a really long canvas and it's just not going to fit our needs. So what we'll need to do is go under File, Build Settings, and make sure we swap over to Android or iOS, depending on which one you're trying to build for. Of course, in my case, I'll be using an Android device. The reason I'm actually swapping platform that early is so I can head over to the game, the game scene here, the game uh, window, sorry, and put this under landscape. I'll be using landscape 1280 by 800 because it's the biggest one. So once you've chosen a landscape, we are now going to head back under the scene, click on the canvas, then change some of the property over here. So under canvas scaler, let's make sure we are on scale with screen size. And the reference resolution is going to be 1280 by 800. So it's the same exact thing as we have right here. And that's going to be the actual settings for every single canvas in our game. All right, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and just click on our image, rename it. So F2. And that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the background. Actually, let's make sure that this one takes up the whole screen. So for the background, I'll be using a simple white color just like this one. I will click here on the anchor then make sure it stretches on both axes, then put everything on zero. So it takes the whole screen. And that is my background right here. Now on top of my background, I will add another image. So let's right click on canvas, UI, image, and that's going to be my logo. So for my logo, I'll simply go under artwork and just make sure that it is a 2D. Right now it's not a 2D or a sprite. So I'll just select everything right here texture type, change it for Sprite 2D and UI, and then hit apply. This way they now have transparency and I can actually use them as sprites. So back on my logo, I'll change the source image for my avatar. And here it is. We are off a great start, but we're still far from over 
with this whole preloader scene. The next thing I want to do is create a fade effect. So when we launch the game, I want the screen to be totally white and then it fades in so I can actually see this. And then once we're done loading all the data in our game, it goes back to white and then we can just do, we can just keep fading out and fading in every single scene so it looks like it, it's actually seamless. Of course, in order to achieve this, I'll be using a script. But before that, let's right click on canvas once more, create another image and let's call this fade. For now, since we just want to see it work or not, I'm going to put it on like a small, a light red color right here. Then make sure we expand it on both axes, reset everything back on zero, and here we go. That is going to be our fade screen. Now at this point, all we need to do is to write down some code. So what I will be doing right here, the way I'm actually going to control the fade in and fade out, the opacity of that layer, is by using a canvas group. So on fade, on my fade object right here, I will add a new component called canvas group. And we're going to be playing with the alpha component of it. As you can tell, if we play with this value, it actually fades in or fades out. So 0.5 here would be a half fade and then so on. So this is what we're going to be playing with. Let's just leave the canvas group over here. We're going to be grabbing a reference later on in our code. Now talking about code, where is our script going to lie? What I like to do when I create those kind of scenes here and I have like a script that takes care of the whole scene, which is what's going to happen in this case, is to create an object specific for it. So I'll right click right here in the hierarchy, create an empty game object, and call this one preloader scene. Just like this, I'm also going to reset the position, and then we can go ahead and create our new script. So this one is going to be called preloader you're going to see it pop up down here in your project folder along with the scene. So just to make sure we don't get anything confused, let's drag and drop preloader the scene inside of the scene folder and preloader the script inside of the script folder. We are then going to double click on preloader or double click right here. In both cases, it is going to open up your favorite editor. All right, so like we always do, let's just make sure we clean up everything and let's start laying down some actual fields right here. So the first one I'll need is a canvas group. I'll call this the fade group. This is going to be the canvas group that we just created on the fade object. I'm also going to need another float called load time to keep track of the time and then float minimum logo time. And I'll explain to you what this does exactly. So the minimum logo time is basically going to tell you the minimum time that you need to be staying in that scene. So minimum time of that scene. And in case you want to be showing your logo for a minimum of five seconds, then you're actually going to put that on five. Now, the reason it is a minimum and not a maximum or a set amount is because we're going to start preloading ourselves. So assuming that you have like uh, assets from the web and you need to grab them from a web server, then what happens there is you have a delay and you might actually get a late response. So maybe after six seconds, but we're not allowed to actually swap scene as long as we don't have those assets. So that's why it's a minimum, but the maximum might be infinite or timeout in that case. But don't worry about it on our end since we are not preloading a lot of stuff and everything is on our device. I'm still going to leave the minimum logo time to three seconds because I want them to see my logo and just, you know, pride. That kind of stuff. All right, let's go and lay down the start function. It's gonna be quite simple. We're gonna start by grabbing the only canvas group in the scene. And this is really important to specify that it's the only one because the way we're going to be grabbing this is not with a public drag and drop in the inspector, it's by doing a find object of type canvas group. Now if we had multiple canvas group in the scene, this would actually mess up our mechanic right here and this call might give us the wrong fake group. But since we only have one in the scene, then it's going to return us the one we want. All right. Then once we have it, we're going to start with a white screen. The way we do this is by taking the fake group, then changing the alpha to one. If you guys remember a little bit earlier, we had this object right here called fade and we were playing with the opacity of it with the alpha field. So alpha right here, if it's on one, it's full. And if it's on zero, it is empty. At the very beginning, we make sure that we don't see anything. We make sure that the fade is actually full opacity. All right, so once we have done that, then we preload the game. So in case you have data from outside, then this is where you actually do it. In my case, I do not have any, so I'll just be putting 
a double dollar sign. But in case you actually want to put something in there, uh, this is where you would be doing it. And then after that, we're going to get a timestamp. So get a timestamp of the completion time. Now, if the load time is super fast, so if load time is super fast, give it a small buffer time so we can appreciate the logo. Appreciate the logo. And that is the whole mechanic I've mentioned a little bit earlier. So if time that time is smaller than the minimum logo time, then load time is going to be equal to that minimum logo time. So three seconds in this case. Else, if it's actually above that, let's just say that load time is equal to time that time. And you'll see where we actually use this a little bit later on in the update, and I'll keep explaining why. Okay, so, all right, so the start is pretty much done. What you do here is you grab the fade group, then you make sure it is actually set on full opacity, and then you preload the game. So this might actually take two frames, this might actually take two minutes, depending if you're fetching data from outside. In our case, we're not doing anything, so it's gonna be pretty much instant. But um, if you're doing something else, you know, it's gonna take a while, and then you end up here. And at this point, time.time .time is either equal to, in our case, it's going to be equal to zero since we're still on the very first frame, or something crazy like six or seven seconds. In our case, since we're at zero and we want to have a minimum logo time of three, then load time is going to be set on three, else it's going to be set on that big number. Okay, now how do we go about using this? We're going to be using this in a private void update, of course. And there is really two parts to that update. The first is the fade in. And second is the fade out, as simple as that. So for the fade in, all we have to say is if time the time is smaller than the minimum logo time, so if it's smaller than three, then we are still in the fading in phase. At this point, we gotta be setting the alpha. So fade group dot alpha is equal to one minus time dot time. And this is going to give us a really, really short fade in time. It's gonna be one second and then you're gonna be seeing the full image. Now, as far as the fade out goes, we have to wait until we get the queue. So the queue is to say that um, load time is not equal to zero anymore because it has been assigned, which means we've completed loading our game and we're now ready to move on to the other scene. So if time that time is bigger than minimum logo time, and really important, you put the end statement here, and load time is not equal to zero, then at this point, we're going to say fade group dot alpha is equal to time dot time minus minimum logo time. And now even better than that, if we are now above one or equal to one in alpha, that means we're ready to move on to the other scene. So fade group dot alpha is bigger or equal to one. Now the thing here, it can't really be bigger than one, but we're gonna be putting bigger or equal anyway, just to make sure. Um, if it's bigger or equal to one, then let's do a debug dot log for now. And let's just change the scene. So change to scene if I can type for some reason. Okay, so that is our script right here. It's a really short script and it's gonna be taking care of pretty much everything. So let's go back in the game and test this out. So let's go ahead and actually boot this game. And we start with a nice fade in, wait three seconds and then it goes fade out. And then as you can tell, we get the change the scene call at the end here. So that's pretty much it. That is our very first episode in which we actually create our preloader scenes, we load our data during that scene, and then we actually plugged in our call at the end to change the scene. So that is all we need to do for today, guys. Of course, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and make sure you share with your friends because we can all be making games and having a great time and then just being like, oh, my game is better than yours and that kind of stuff, and just spam my comment section with your games and your link, and that'd be, that'd be so great. I would enjoy this quite a lot. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Click on the video right here on the screen if you want to move on to the second part.